Hi, everyone, and welcome to Living Hypnotically. I am Erica Flint, and Living Hypnotically is where we explore the benefits of hypnosis and the application of hypnosis with professional hypnotists. And today I have Heather Stewart with me. And Heather, how are you doing today? I'm great. What first got you interested in hypnosis? Can you tell everyone your origin story? I was 20 years old, so almost 32 years ago. I went to, I call it Sideshow Bob, and I went with two of my girlfriends, and I thought it was just the craziest thing how people would go on stage. It was, it was just so entertaining, but I, it made me go, wow, like, wow, how, to actually see people not controlled, but how yeah. they can have their mind guided. Wow. I thought, I just thought that was phenomenal. And then fast forward. <laughs> to 2017, I started thinking, what do I want to, what do I want to do when I grow up? What do I want to do? I have my own business and it's good and I do enjoy it, but it's something. And I did what is always recommended. Go back to what you love, do what you mm -hmm. love and you'll love what you do. So I started looking into, I would say, I guess it would really fall into the category of like alternative practices, like homeopathy and yeah energy healing and things of this nature. So within about four weeks, I found Cascade Hypnosis Center in Bellingham, contacted you. This was back in the day. This was like a fourth floor of Bellingham. All right, when we were upstairs. Little classroom. And that was, I think it was January or February of 2017. Mm -hmm. I was enrolled to start in September. Wow. So, so you started at Cascade Hypnosis Center in September or you took the class in September? I took the classes in September, graduated in October and started practicing December 1st of 2017. Wow. Yeah. Very good. We got you in from classroom to client, just like we say, yeah. into exactly. same clients. Yeah. It, you, it really was seamless in that. It just really was like out of the classroom. This is what I want to do. And on we went. That was good. Good job. Good yeah. job. And I know you've used hypnosis yourself for some things, right? I have for a number of things. One thing, this is going again back to before becoming a hypnotist, another experience with hypnosis was to stop spending money. I wasn't a big spender. I just, I wasn't, but I didn't want to spend needless money. Just mm -hmm. save. I wanted to save. I, there wasn't a lot coming in. Kids were little. And so I saw a woman that I knew that had done a program in Canada. I saw her three times and all of a sudden I was saving money. Like I was being discerning and where it went, not that. And again, I have to say, I wasn't a big spender, but it, it and to that, to me, I didn't feel the difference until I had to renovate a house and had to spend money. And then I didn't want to spend money. You didn't want to because of the yeah, hypnosis you had been. Yeah. And I have to say that was the next big trigger because that was in 2016. Mm -hmm. And I was really marveling at how, okay, you have to buy wire. You have to buy drywall. You, ha you have to do these things, Heather. What the heck? And I, oh my gosh, it's stuck. Like, isn't it's that stuck. phenomenal? And it's still go about my way, boo. And then, so come in and uh, be graduate and then become a client. And I used it for coffee was a big one. Cause I was a two pot a day or, and I'm sorry, that is not healthy. Not two cups. Okay. Two pots. So we went through that and that to this day has stuck. I am at two cups a day. And I think that's very, they say with that science, it's really good for the brain. So I'm happy about that. And then the big one, which is where it all, we're going and becoming a hypnotherapist, where it led me was healing from my past. I had been in talk therapy, which I still, it's a great thing. I had done a number of different therapies and it was still there. Like the stuff, the triggers were still there. The stuff was still there. You talk about the story. Somebody says, remember this time? And it was all still the there. The emotion is still there. It was all still there. Yeah. And even though on a conscious level, I can rationalize it, put it in its place, deep inside that visceral reaction would still happen. And I think wow. I'm an intelligent human being and I'm, and I'm what is going on? And that's what I find with my clients. They're like, I know better. What the heck? What's going on? And they do know better. They know it in their conscious mind, don't they? Yeah. And it can be really frustrating to know what you should do. But in that moment, you really don't feel like following through. And so you don't. Yeah. And it's frustrating, right? But to know like, what you should do and not follow through. Right. Yeah, I agree with that completely. And so when I, that, and that, that was a huge one because at that 
point, that was 2017. And uh, so I was 46 years old and I had been carrying around this stuff literally since I was a few days old in, in this little life of ours. So to get rid of it and unload it, and I think very similarly to my clients, you have these moments of huge release and lightness, but yeah. there was like this aha until the next time that thing came around, you went, the aha was, oh my God, aha, I'm not, boom. I can honestly say I've dealt with this for the first time in my life. Isn't that lovely? When a client, they might be in the same situation, but they're not yeah. getting charged. They're not getting upset. They're just... It's it a flat is. response. It Sometimes is. I have to point this out to my clients. I'm like, wait, what did you just say to me? Is that how you would have responded to your brother three weeks ago? Because yeah. they feel so calm that they forget how upset they used to be. So yes, sometimes they'll notice. And sometimes it's gotten so good that they forget that it was a problem in the past. Exactly. But I think that answered. Yeah. Who are you helping now? What kind of clients, like kind of issues are people coming to you for now? Primarily, every, I would say all of the stuff, all of the things we all see people for all has to deal with the past and the trauma of the past. But yeah. the, primarily the clients that I see that come my way, it would be my ideal client, are clients where that past stuff isn't necessarily giving them a bad habit. It's giving mm -hmm. them a not a bad life. It's giving them a bad reaction within their life. They don't like the path their life has taken. They don't like how work is, they're reacting in work, how they're reacting with their spouse, how oh, every interesting. anxiety level. So, you know, some people say that's PTSD. I guess maybe it's like a PTSD. It's it's the emotional, like the emotional stuff that they're coming because it's an emotional thing. It's not emotional and now they're smoking. It's emotional and now they're eating. Now it's not so much that it's- We see that all the time too, though. And that's a very common, and I think that's why you're making this distinction that it is highly common for people to have a problem and use a coping strategy. And it's the yeah. coping strategy, drinking too much, eating too much, smoking too much, hair pulling, something like that. It's the coping strategy that brings people in that yeah. we resolve. But this sounds like it's a little bit different. They're not doing that. They're not doing that. They're coming oh. to me simply because those emotions have taken over. And it's wow. the, so it's almost like a too much emotion issue in a sense. Okay. You know? So what happens with a lot of these clients? What exactly. are you finding? Well, yeah, they come through it. And many of them, we start off when, we, when, when I first start speaking with them, when I have a consultation with them is they will say, I've done the talk therapy. I've done the light therapy. I've done the sound air therapy. I've gone to Reiki. I've done these things. I've done, and it hasn't been resolved. I feel better, but the stuff is still happening. Okay. And I don't want to talk about it again. I don't want to do this again. I don't want to do. And my response to them is, we're going to be done. Though. This will You're be the last time. Times, and we're going to actually be done. And that's okay. what's happening, of course. Yeah, then happening, and then we're done. So, so we get to the results. We get to that root cause that is driving behavior. I think you mentioned earlier, you know, how much our subconscious is driving our behavior. And so your clients aren't getting those knee-jerk reactions anymore. They feel more peaceful is what my, I'm guessing. Much more peaceful, much more yeah. peaceful. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Interesting. Interesting that a lot of your clients aren't having the too much behaviors that is super standard. Super standard. Um, yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right. Can you tell us maybe a client win or a story that in, in, inspirational to some of your potential clients out there? I have told this story. I have, there are, you grad, you start practicing in 2017 and I'm fortunate. I have a lot of, a lot of good stories, but this one I tell, because this is an area that was brand new to me when okay. I saw this client. And it's, it was a phobia that was built coming from a stressful situation. So it wasn't, okay. it was a post-traumatic stress reaction that built okay. the phobia. And it was to swimming and it was huge. She had literally drowned when she was four years old. There's a real fear there. Understandable, logical fear why the brain would be afraid of that. And we right. see that all the time, an actual all time. experience. It all yep. the sense in the world. And then it got compounded because it frightened her parents so much that they became oh. overprotective. So really taking that fear and throwing it deep into those cells, into the central nervous system, totally to be expected. From the adults around her too, not just her. Yeah, okay. so they were fearful of the, you know, all that loss that it didn't happen, but the potential, it's always that potential that Right. really the driving force behind a lot of fears. It's not the reality. It's the what if. It's what if, what it's might happen. What, what could have happened? It didn't, but right. what could 
So if, well, you know, and the brain is still operating as if it could have happened. And that's really a lot of the work we do. That's the work because it's stuck there. Yes. And so fast forward and she's 46 years old and her children are in their late teens, early twenties. And she or her husband have got a boat and they're wanting to be on the ocean and they're going to Hawaii and they want to go deep sea diving. And she can't go in the water because like even in a life jacket, the panic. Oh, she can't even yeah. get on the boat. No. And okay. she finally decided, she goes, enough is enough. This is it. This is when I, and surely at the end of it, Hawaii got canceled because of that thing called COVID. It oh, never right. opened up. But as far as by the end of session, she was on that boat swimming in the ocean with her girls without a life jacket, having fun. Wow. Good yeah. job. So Good job that, to your client and hypnosis and you, Heather. That's she fantastic. She did the work. She did the work too. I think you would say the same thing. We have this beautiful little tool and here you go. But if you don't pick it up. Right. Yeah. So work. it's really, it really is our clients that are doing the work and we get to help them and we get to assist them. We notice things as professionals that clients might not notice. And this is why doing hypnosis with a professional is different than getting hypnosis on YouTube, right? Because you have personal response or personal suggestions and personal specific mm -hmm. custom language that you're using with your client, but also we get to watch, we get to notice, we get to pay attention to our client's emotional state and help them through that usually faster than they would ever do it on their own. And they might miss a lot of things if they didn't have someone there with them too. And that's just it going through this stuff. It's like anything you're going through any kind of hard time that you don't know the end result doesn't matter. But if you know, you've got somebody by your side going through it with you, not leaving Yep, brings a whole other level of confidence to it. Absolutely. And I just feel compelled to mention one of the things that really surprised me in my practice, and I've been doing it for almost 10 years now, but I'm a very logical person and I always want there to be an answer, something that kind of makes sense. But throughout the years, what I noticed is that in some situations, clients, and I would say humans and the human heart and the human mind just want somebody there with them. Meaning we might have a client who's going through a really low point in age regression or something like that. Like it's a horrific experience, let's yeah. just say, but just sitting with my client with that experience, they feel seen, heard, loved. There's nothing wrong with them. I'm not running away. It's not horrific, anything like that. So I really like that you said that because to some degree, yes, we're going to sit there with them. There's nothing wrong with you and go through it with them. And that, that helps so very much, doesn't so it? Very much. Especially yeah. in age regression, where we bring them to that space where they are, that little kid where they did have to do it by themselves initially. Yeah. Right? yeah. It makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, very good. And then we are able to get our clients results. And I think that's what's really important because yeah. so many folks, it's, yeah, they feel a little bit better, like what you were saying before, but they might have to go back and do more work on it. I just love that with hypnosis, we can get to that root cause and the feeling is gone. They know it still happened, but the feeling, right? Yeah. That's what we're doing in hypnosis. We get into that feeling space. So really good job, yeah. Heather. That's fantastic. Now, do you live hypnotically now? Do you introduce, incorporate hypnosis into your daily life? I do. We were taught and I am a practitioner and teacher of seventh path self-hypnosis. So that's so. a big thing that I do. And now that takes a little bit of time. It does. Yep. It's, it's on purpose. If I'm in my day-to-day -day bits and pieces and stuff is happening, stuff is happening. Yeah. I take our first recognition that unto itself, because I've done it so often, yep. just saying it does an automatic Zen in my brain, but I did the work to get the practice to have it do and that's so that's like a positive, what we might call a positive hypnotic anchor, right? We get yes. classical conditioning. Yes. You conditioned yourself yes. to know that as soon as you start saying those words, the brain or the heart is like, oh, I feel better. Oh, we're doing hypnosis. Oh, let's just relax into it. Exactly. Yeah. So that's my positive anchor for the day, if Very you good. will. Have there been other ones? Yes, I definitely have, you know, I always, I, it's one of these things you learn it way back when, and then just for, you're changing, basically mixing the brain up to get the anxiety to come down, the energy to come down with hands across the body. Yep. But yeah, th those are my two big ones. So would that be like, like bilateral stimulation? Is that's that kind of the technical the term of the technique we're yeah, talking about there? Exactly. That's the technical term that evades. Yep. But yeah. Very good. Very good. I love that technique as well. And I've, I don't always share technical terms with my clients unless they really want to know. And a lot of them are super curious, but that one, I usually describe as diffusion because what's happening is we can feel 
a, a f- like a focus point for our stress or for the overwhelm. And when you do something like you're crossing your arms across your body, like you were just showing with bilateral stimulation, it does diffuse the sensation of anxiety across the brain. So it almost as it just spreads it out and we can't notice that it's there anymore. I think that's a fantastic technique. Kids can use it. I use it all the time. You know, walking around, I think is a great one too, to do that technique. I find myself pacing from time to time when I'm a little bit worried. So if I remember to do that technique, I usually get even better results. Yeah. It is about, to me, it, it combats the fight or flight. Even if I'm not like at that total fight or flight, just even that little bit of cortisol mm-hmm. raising in the body is not very comfortable. So I do very like good. that. Yeah. Very good. So how did you, how do you remember to do that? I think that's something for our clients. It's like, we might teach them anti-anxiety techniques. And I think Gnosis clients, acute anti-anxiety techniques is a big part of our job. I'm yeah. always teaching my clients something to stay calm in the moment. I, how do I remember? It, uh, honestly, sometimes it takes me a minute because depending yeah. on what it is, I can get pretty wrapped up. Yeah. So it's the wrapping up in the, uh, and it's going, and it's okay, well, whoa. First off, I think I just remember, I don't like feeling this way. Yep. I don't like feeling this way and I don't yep. need to feel this way. And you, it, it's like any habit, good habit, bad habit. You've done it enough. You just start stepping into it automatically, yeah. like a muscle yeah. memory. So if that's what I do in, encourage with my job, yeah. why I'm a little hard on with their homework is mm-hmm. just going to become so natural to you that give it a little bit of time. Oh, it's hard. Oh, I... It, you're right. You're creating a new habit. So on the yeah. conscious level, we remember. So the subconscious level can just kick in later. Good. So it sounds like with consistency, it just becomes a habit like we would anticipate. Yeah. Yeah. And I love how you said that even you as a professional hypnotist and me as well, it's being a professional hypnotist, we start doing things perfectly and we always remember exactly what we're doing. And we always have clarity and we always do self-hypnosis in the moment when we're supposed to, and that doesn't happen. (laughs) and we're busy and life happens but with the consistency a new habit gets developed and what I like to say to my clients is the moment you notice it Mm -hmm. the moment that you remember you have a technique that's when to do it that is when to do it the moment that you're like oh wait I have this technique and then do it and the other thing that I like to tell my clients is don't feel bad there's no guilt if it took me a minute to remember that I need to do the technique I'm not going to feel bad oh you should have remembered it earlier Erica that's counterproductive right totally and I like to tell my clients I think they would all I think if you got all of them up in a row they would say yes Heather says we can't do it wrong you can't do it wrong oh beautiful you can't do it wrong beautiful yeah. Thank you. Just, as it comes, as you remember, just keep on it. You can't do it wrong. And that's just such a beautiful theme because the way that I like to work with my clients is really, there's nothing wrong with you. Nothing wrong. wrong. You. You're doing the best with what you had. Yeah. You're just, we're all just doing the human thing. Right. And when clients really get that, now they start feeling more confident. They start really leaning into their own love and desire and all sorts of things. And they just feel more peaceful and are more successful ultimately. And I think there's a big one. And it's, I heard this a long time ago and you being a type A, I fought it because I thought that was ridiculous. But the reality is you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, true. Yeah. If you could give a message to your potential clients out there, like a message of hope or something about hypnosis, what would you want to say? Ah, Gosh, that's a big one. It's very emotional for me in the sense that how do you, you don't, okay, you don't know what you don't know. You, most of our clients know that what they have been doing hasn't worked. Hence why I'm starting to look in another direction yep. and to know that if they, if they can find themselves the right therapist for them, the right hypnotherapist for themselves, because that's a big component too. You have to be able to groove with the person that you're working with. You, they will achieve more in five sessions than they truly hands up. And from a lot of my clients and for myself, you'll achieve more in five sessions than you would in easily 12 months of other types of therapies. Will you get where you want to go? I always guarantee my clients, they will not be in the same chair they're sitting in when they sit down for their first session that I guarantee that. They could yeah. be exactly where they want to be. They could be up and over the next mountain, mm-hmm. still finding their way up the first mountain, but they will <laughs> never be where they are when they start. Wow. Beautiful. It sounds like you do really good work with your clients. You've been doing it since 2017. That's a lot of, you've seen a lot of clients. It sounds like I've seen a few clients. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And I good. love it. 
I'm really happy for it. <laughs> Very good. Can you tell me what surprised you about being a hypnotist? Lot, lots of surprises, actually. And you know what? Surprises and how I use hypnosis also. Because okay. the clients that, tip, that, that I do see quite generally typically come with such emotional trauma, shall we say, that I first off, I'm surprised at how well people, surprise me how well people do function under the stuff that they've gone. That's a huge surprise. It surprises me also that I put myself into a state of hypnosis to walk with them through it, mm -hmm. to try to feel, put as much empathy into it, not sympathy, but empathy to really feel where they're at and that mm -hmm. I'm able to let it go. That really surprised me. I didn't think I'd Good be job. able to do, I thought I'd ruminate, be a ruminator and, and no. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, you, I don't know that I that, thought I'd sorry. ruminate. Go ahead and finish. No, I was going to say that it really surprised me the strength of the human condition. What, what we, that, and I never really, I didn't understand that until hypnosis. I really didn't. Yeah. I remember one of the first times I started teaching one of the students when I was teaching the hypnosis certification course, one of the students says, Erica, how can you do this every day? And we we're talking about things that might show up in your practice. And I sat there and I thought, for a moment, because nobody had asked me this question yet. And when I got the answer, it felt really good. And I still believe the answer is true. And so I don't go into it with my clients because I know that the technique works. So while my client might be expressing some deep sorrow or frustration or whatever it is, fear, sadness that they're going through. And I love how you shared this empathy about it, but not taking it home and not really getting into it with them. And the way that I started being able to do that is because I know they're going to get results. So even when they are sitting there in that moment, I can see the light and I can see the benefit and associate to that, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, we know these techniques work. And so even when someone's having a really hard time right in front of us, we know they're going to get results and we know the results are going to happen in just a moment, a moment, they're going to get that insight and all of that is going to go away. A moment. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. all changes in a moment. Very good. All right. Is there anything you'd, anything else you'd like to share about hypnosis or being a professional hypnotist? Oh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's super it and all probably all different kinds of people are going to be seeing this video because everybody watches you. So anybody that I would, if I could say this, anybody that's watching it just to hear what a hypnotist is like and looking at going to school, becoming a student and then professional hypnotist himself. One of the best things that you told me mm -hmm. and then Cal said was all of this stuff we're talking about with experience, you don't get it unless you do it. So if you do watch this, if you go to school, if you become a hypnotist, just start doing it. Yeah. Just start just, doing it. Just start doing it. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. Well, how can people get in contact with you? If they want to do sessions with you, what should they do? They should contact Cascade Hypnosis Center. That's the best way. Okay. That's the best way to get a hold of me. Yeah. All right. Very good. Thank you, Heather, so much for being Thank here. You, Erica. Nice to see you. Nice Good to see you too. You. Very good. I'm Erica Flint, and you can find me at CascadeHypnosisTraining.com, where we train compassionate humans to become professional hypnotherapists with thriving practices. If you would like to do sessions with Heather, please contact us at CascadeHypnosisCenter.com. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for joining. Bye for now. Get the book. Start hypnotizing. Get the book and first hypnosis lesson free now at canyoubeahypnotist.com.